Right, hello everyone and welcome to this um, tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at privilege escalation and we're going to be exploiting weak uh, services on a Windows machine and I'm actually paying attention to an application here which is called the Photodex Producer 5.03310 and what we're going to be exploiting is we're going to be exploiting uncoated service parts in order to exploit weak services in order to escalate um, privileges so a low privilege user will be able to add this user to the local administrative group so at the moment I've got an interpreter shell to the Windows 7 machine if I do a sysinfo you can actually see you've got a Windows 7 machine um, running on a 32-bit architecture the get UID reveals the the username is actually Obama if I do a shell into this user and try to see the status of this user, you can see at the moment the user only belongs to the administrative, uh, into the, no, not the administrative, I beg your pardon, belongs to the user's local group at the moment. So this user hasn't got any, any um, administrative privileges because it belongs to the local user group. So, in order to enumerate um, uncoated service parts, I've got this WMIC command, which I'm just going to copy and paste into the remote um, shell we have on the Windows 7 machine. And you can see here we've got two services that actually have uncoated parts one is the SCSI Access, and the other one is the SingBreeze Enterprise. However, I'm actually going to be exploiting the um, the SCSI access um, service in order to elevate the privilege. So let's have a look. Let's go into this uh, directory in order to to have a look at the at the kind of privileges users have on this um, SCSI access exe executable file. So I'm just going to go back to the C prompt then CD program files and then using the Windows Access Control Utility, you can enumerate the service to see what kind of privileges users actually have. I think I got that wrong, spell that again. Scars the access. You can see here, everyone has actually got full control to this um, executable file. So that means we could move, delete this file, we could replace this file with the malicious file. And once the service actually restarts, that um, malicious executable file will actually be executed in the binary part of this um, service. So at the moment, I've got. Um, a script which is written in C and all we go here is we've got a user called Obama which is going to be added to the local administrative group I've gone ahead to compile this C script to a user add exe file and also found a way to get this file onto the Windows 7 machines desktop as you can see here so what I'm going to do is from this command prompt I'm going to move the current original uh, SCSI access exe file and I'm going to rename it SCSI access the original and you can see that was successfully moved and then I'm going to go ahead and copy the user add file which we actually have on the user's um, desktop So 
that was successfully copied we can confirm that in the directory and we can see here that the user ad is actually in the, in the directory and then going to re rename the user ad file to the original SCSI access executable so that's successfully been added so once the service actually restart, this malicious SCSI access executable is actually going to be executed, thereby adding the user called Obama to the local administrative group. So using the SC command, we could try to restart the service. And we can see we got an access denied just because this user is not um, an administrative or a privileged user so how how can we then do this because this appears to be a problem so one way we could do it, this is we could create a backdoor a persistent backdoor that allows um, this system to be able to connect back to the attacker's machine to a, a remote um, interpreter shell so once the system then reboots, we would have a interpreter shell connection and also hopefully the uh, low prior user will have been added to the local administrative group. So I'm going to exit from this shell back to a interpreter shell and put this interpreter shell in the background. Clear screen. Confirm the session is still active. You can see we've got session one. And then I'm going to do a search for persistence. We do have a lot of modules, but I'm going to be going for the Windows Local Persistent module. So we use that. Look at the options. And you can see from the options, uh, we've got a delay of 10 seconds. So once the machine restarts a delay of 10 seconds before the payload actually connects back to us. And then we need to set the, the session. So all we need to set in this module is the session. And we've confirmed earlier on that we're running on session one. So we're going to set session to one. Just gonna clear screen again. So we've got a session set to one. We don't need to set anything else. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this persistence. So that has successfully executed and the payload has been installed in the um, Windows registry. So once this the system reboots and we're actually listening on a multi-handler um, interpreter shell, we'll be able to get a interpreter shell once we're actually listening on, on, on the network. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then um, go go to the session so session one go back to the Windows shell and then run the shutdown command to restart the the, the Windows 7 machine remotely so if I have a quick look here we can see Windows will shut down in less than a minute so what we can do here is we could exit this shell exit the interpreter shell as well okay so we can see the shell has been closed And then we go back to MSF console. So how the machine is started to reboot. We use the multi handler module. Set our payload. As a Windows interpreter, 
reverse shell. Set our L hosts to the attacker machine IP address and we run the exploit. So once this user called Obama logs back in, we should have a interpreter shell. Excellent. So we could confirm the identity of this shell. We can see the user code Obama. If we go into shell, and then we try to enumerate the user Obama to see if it's been added. And you can see successfully the user Obama has been added to the local administrative group. So this user has been elevated from um, a, a local group users to the administrators group at the moment. So this user has elevated privileges. So I hope this um, tutorial helps you understand how you could exploit weak Windows services in order to conduct a privilege escalation. Okay, thank you very much.